A lot of times when people try to lose weight, they turn to extremely high volume, low calorie food options like extremely large salads and using a lot of artificial sweeteners that don't actually have any caloric content. And I absolutely think that there's nothing wrong with leveraging these tools. But I do think that if these are the only tools that you're leveraging, you will be left feeling hungry a lot of the time. So I think there are two different feelings that we can get in response to food. The first is satisfaction and the second is satiation. So satisfaction will allow us to stop eating during the meal, but satiation will allow us to remain full until the next meal. But satiation is actually a nutrient driven process, meaning you will actually need to ingest some sort of nutrients if you want to stay full for long periods of time. And the thing that these very high volume foods do is they actually come along with a lot of water content. And the way that they make you feel full is by stretching out your stomach, triggering what are called stretch receptors. And what I think we're doing here is not decreasing our appetite, rather we are mitigating our hunger. And what I mean is that there's a specific hormone that will bind to a receptor in the brain to cause us to feel hungry. And this hormone is called ghrelin. And ghrelin actually gets produced when the stomach is empty. And then when the stomach gets stretched out, we will reduce the production of ghrelin until the size of the stomach shrinks again. And this is why if you ever get hungry and you drink a lot of water, for a period of time, you're no longer hungry. And then very quickly, you will get hungry again once you simply absorb all this water and decrease the size of your stomach. And this really is the same mechanism that very high volume meals like large salads or sugar-free gelatin are tapping into. And again, I don't think there's anything wrong with these foods, but because these foods don't actually contain an abundance of nutrients, they likely won't have any sort of effects on suppressing your appetite. So transiently, you may feel full because you no longer have this hunger being signaled by ghrelin. But because these foods are mostly water, they'll be digested extremely rapidly and your stomach will be empty again and increase the production of ghrelin. With that being said, the mechanism that actually promotes long-term satiety is appetite suppression. And the way that we produce hormones that will suppress our appetite is actually through the presence of nutrients inside of our intestines. And there's a specific hormone that we produce in our intestine called GLP-1. And you may have heard of it because it's a new medication actually being used for appetite suppression and weight loss. And now the cells in the intestines that produce GLP-1 also produce a few other hormones that work to suppress our hunger. But the very important thing to know about these cells is that they're located near the bottom portion of our intestines. And we will begin to produce these hormones when there are nutrients present in the region of our intestine that contains these cells. But the tricky thing is that these cells are actually located towards the bottom of our intestinal tract. But since we can absorb nutrients throughout the entire intestinal tract, a lot of the nutrients that we eat will actually be absorbed before they make it to this region of the intestine. In essence, the less structure a food has, the quicker it will be absorbed. For example, mashed potatoes are actually absorbed more quickly than a boiled potato and a burger will be absorbed more quickly than an intact piece of steak. And any sort of liquid will be absorbed the quickest. So the more complex in structure a food is, the slower it will digest, and the more likely it will be to interact with the cells that will produce these satiating hormones. But I think we can actually leverage both satiation and satisfaction. As I mentioned, this process takes foods that digest very slowly. And it takes a fairly long time for these foods to actually travel all the way down our intestines and stimulate the production of these hormones. And this process will probably take around one to two hours. But by the time we actually receive the signal in our brain that we have enough nutrients to stop eating, we may have accidentally overconsumed. But I did mention that stretching out the stomach causes a very immediate, albeit it's acute, but it is immediate, reduction in hunger and by the time this avenue of appetite suppression wears off given that we've eaten enough of the nutrients that we need the hormones responsible for keeping our appetite suppressed will begin to be produced and begin signaling inside of the brain so the best way to do this would actually be to begin your meal with a food that is 
high in nutrients but has a fairly complex structure. So maybe instead of starting your meal with a salad, you finish your meal with a salad. Or another thing that I've found to work extremely well is actually using unflavored gelatin and using your own personal sweeteners. And now gelatin is mostly water, but you also get the additional benefit of gelatin being a collagen protein. So you get a few more of the amino acids that may not be in as high of quantities in muscle meat. But you would actually eat this at the end of the meal in order to stretch out your stomach just slightly and reduce that hunger drive that is being driven by ghrelin. But you would eat this after a very nutrient dense food. And I think the best example of this would simply just be steak and potatoes. Or if you prefer a lower carbohydrate approach, steak and eggs. So I think to wrap it all up, trying to rely on foods that are extremely high in volume but don't actually come with sufficient energy will leave you feeling hungry a lot of times. In essence, you're really trying to trick your brain and that never works. But we can utilize this strategy in order to make up for the delayed appetite suppression of nutrient-dense foods.